Hello everyone, Aubrey here for IELTS Energy TV. In today's episode, Jessica and I share two sample part two IELTS speaking answers about describing places. You'll get lots of band nine vocabulary and native natural speaking tips. So listen in for those and go to allearsenglish.com slash quiz to get your language level, whether it's for IELTS, business, or general fluency, you can take a quiz and get free resources for your level. Check it out today, allearsenglish.com slash quiz. Good morning, Aubrey. How's it going? I'm great. How are you today? I'm good. Um, a lot of things swirling in my head. Uh, we have soccer practice tonight and I need to call my mom back, you know, life. Um, life. it's just, it's a, funny as an adult, like how many hats we wear. There's a great idiom for you guys, um, to wear too many hats or I'm wearing this hat. Um, that is a synonym for a life role, right? So it's like the mother hat, the dog hat, the coach hat, blah, blah, blah. So you could say, Oh, sometimes I feel like I'm wearing too many hats. You know, right. I go straight from podcaster hat to mom hat. Right. Kids to soccer and then maybe go on a date in your wife hat. <laughs> uh, I know, so many hats. So, so many. many hats, you guys. OK, so what are we doing today, Aubrey? We're going to give some sample part two answers. I love doing sample answers. It's so fun. I know I do, too. They're fun. And I know you guys really love them. We've gotten lots of comments, feedback that you love these sample answers. So much great vocab and especially part two. I think it's really good for you to see how much it takes to fill that two answer two minutes yeah. and then to take it, to go and respond to the same question, time yourself so that you can see, Oh man, I need to know a lot of vocab for these questions. You need to vamp for a long time. Vamp is a, <laughs> is a great verb. It means like you're, you're talking just to fill time. Um, and you have to learn how to do that for IELTS speaking part two, and it's not going to be perfectly organized. You're not graded on being perfectly organized, right? That's one of the biggest myths that IELTS candidates have is like, um, cause some teachers actually tell you this, that you need to have like an introduction, a body, a conclusion, all this like perfectly organized ideas for part two. You do not, you guys. Absolutely not. To be fluent and coherent in part two, you need to be able to not repeat yourself right? Which is huge, which takes practice, which means to not repeat yourself, you need to move on in every sentence. And oftentimes that means diving into details about side notes and stories, right? Exactly. Like that's what it means. Okay. So hopefully Aubrey and I will do that well today. Yes, exactly. It can really be your downfall if you're trying to do the beginning, middle and end, because you might summarize and still have time. And then what do you do? So I know, right? That is so much better. Just don't plan on doing an end and a summary. Just keep talking and the examiner will stop you when your two minutes are up. Exactly, guys. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, don't try and give a conclusion because it's weird. It's not natural. Like, we don't do that when we're talking. Um, you're, it won't help your score. That's the number one reason. It won't help your score. And it might even hurt your score because you're going to be repeating yourself, right? Exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. Good point. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what are, what, uh, are, are, what are our topics today? So we're going to both answer questions that are related to scenic places, beautiful awesome. places. There'll be different questions, but you I guys will hear a lot of vocab. Scenic, right? It just means some like beautiful vistas and some place mm. where the scenery is really pretty. So you'll get a lot of vocab and there's a good chance that you will have a question like this on IELTS, either part one, part two, or even part three, if you're talking about the environment, keeping the environment totally. beautiful for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, this is one of the main topic types in part two is describing places. So these are really good examples. Uh, before we dive into those sample answers, guys, I want to remind you that you can take a free English quiz, get your level for whatever purpose you have, probably IELTS, right? That's why you're here. But also we have a free business English quiz. We have a free general fluency quiz. You can get your level and free resources that we made just for your level guys. 
take all three quizzes. You know, why not? Um, they only take a few minutes, right? And it, you learn about yourself and you get free learning material. So go to allearsenglish.com slash quiz and take some free English quizzes. Why not? Um, okay. So who's going first? You go first. Oh, I'll dang it. You. <laughs> you should have just said, Aubrey, you go first. <laughs> I know. As I was asking you, I was like, why am I asking and not telling? I should take control if that's what I want. Anyway, right. we're all learning. Okay. <laughs> okay. Your part two question is oh, describe. Wait. Oh, by the way, guys, we haven't planned these. Okay. Oh, Just no. totally spontaneous. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm ready. Okay. Describe an area of your country, you know, and like, hmm. You know, I'm going to choose my own area. That's obviously the most at the forefront of my mind. So it would be easier to talk about. Um, When asked about a beautiful part of where I live, it's tough to choose just one, honestly, because that is one of the most amazing advantages and hugest perks of living in Portland, Oregon, my part of the world, because you literally have access to like every kind of environment. If I drive an hour west, I go to the ocean. If I drive half an hour east, I'm in the snowy mountains. Mount Hood is 45 minutes away. It is a glacier. It is snowy 100% of the year. The U.S. Olympic ski team comes to train at Mount Hood because it's the only place with snow in the summer. Like it is amazing. And not only that, if if I go south, then you can find like high desert, which is like where I grew up near Lake Tahoe. Um, so it, it's tough to discern just like one beautiful place. But let's see. The last Mother's Day, I chose to take an adventure with my son because Mother's Day, I get to do what I want as a mother. And we went to a beautiful muse- art museum that is in the middle of nowhere um, on the banks of the Columbia River in the gorge. The gorge sounds like kind of a gross term, actually. But here it just describes this amazing valley with a river at the bottom. And it's a really famous part of America, actually. Um, and so you could go on the balcony of this art museum on the second floor um purchase a cappuccino first and maybe a biscotti to take with you and sit on the glass glass walled balcony and look over like hundreds of miles it seemed of gorgeous thank you oh dang <laughs> would you go back to that art museum oh my gosh for sure um i want to go back next year for mother's day and make it a tradition Excellent. I threw in that question after because in a lot of my speaking Perfect. classes lately, that th- that sort of throwaway question right after part two, students will continue talking and I'll cut them off. And we have to remember right after part two, you're going to be asked a question that's just a transition to part three. You exactly. want to answer it pretty quickly, just like Jessica did there. Yeah, totally. Oh my God. Aubrey. You're amazing. I'm Give just like <laughs> floored by your intelligence and talent, Aubrey. You're so yes. complimentary lately. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take I'm all in the a good mood, you know, and I love complimenting people. Anyway. Well, let um, me point yeah. out some of the great things you did, right? So first of all, really interesting vocabulary talking about all of the scenic places near your home, right? Snowy mountains, high desert, very specific vocab that you guys might not have thought to learn in your language. You need to right. be able to describe yeah. all types of landscapes in English, right? And then you guys will notice if you listen to that answer again, or you probably noticed the first time after she had sort of described all these beautiful places, she probably would have been a little stuck or repeating herself if she kept describing beautiful places. So instead yeah. she told a story. She went to talk about this art museum she visited with her son and that pulled out interesting vocab about food, cappuccino and biscotti and the things you do <laughs> Which there. Which are two the Italian glass- words. No, I love it. But, but we, we use, use them in English. in English. So use them. <laughs> yes. And then describing this glass walled balcony, right? A great adjective glass walled. If they're instead of saying the balcony had glass walls, right? Band nine to instead flip that, make it an adjective. Great job. 
Thank you so much. Um, I want to go back to that note though, because this is a teaching point guys that you will, well, if the examiner is doing their job correctly, you will be asked a closing question in part two. So the examiner must stop you at two minutes and then ask you a closing question. Like Aubrey said, do not go on and on with that answer. Literally just one sentence, guys, the examiner does not want you to talk a lot. The examiner has to move on to part three. Okay. Like we don't care about your answer, honestly, for that Sorry, closing but... question. So just like a sentence and then get ready for part three. Right. Um, okay. Let's see. So Aubrey, your turn. Oh, this is a fun one. I think I've done an example of this on our YouTube channel, guys. Ooh, nice. uh, IELTS Energy TV. Check that out. I remember describing like a boat trip or something. Anyway. Ooh, and it would be um, curious to hear how different that answer is from the one I'm about to give. Right. Because yeah. you see, man, every part two answer, it's not like there's one answer that it'll be so different depending on your oh my experiences. God. There's a million. Exactly. Yeah. There's not a right answer. Right. right. And that's right. like tough for students to um, take in sometimes like mm -hmm. there's not a right answer. Then what am I supposed to say? <laughs> it's hard guys. I get it. Um, okay. Aubrey describe a place near water. I can't help but talk about where we're going next week, which is Rocky point, Mexico. It's just a brief three and a half hour drive from my home here in Phoenix. So it's even closer than Southern California, which is also pretty close, but they, they have the coolest beaches there. It's called Rocky Point for a reason, Puerto Penasco, because the beaches are very rocky. There's sort of some rocky cliffs, but then there are your white sand beaches that you can play in near the resort. But my favorite are these rocky beaches because you still have the beautiful ocean with this pristine aqua colored water and there's a variety of different hues in the water because of the rocks under the on the beach, just barely submerged by the waves. But you can walk around in these great, um, the reefs, the coral reef is often exposed. So there are tide pools. You can walk around, you can find sea glass, all sorts of crustaceans, little crabs crawling around in the tide pools. It's the best place to take kids. I mean, there are lots of cool tide pools all over the world, but Rocky Point's a really fun one because it's just crawling with living things. And then you can also find really cool shells, big chunks of coral reef, really cool sand dollars, all sorts of shells. So we're going next week. We go every fall because it's terribly hot in Phoenix, but it's not bad right on the beach. So we go to Rocky Point. We stay at a place that has giant swimming pools, which we totally ignore because we have a swimming pool <laughs> in our backyard. So we just go out to the ocean and let the tourists be at the pool. And we swim in the, the waves aren't huge like in California. So we don't surf or go bodyboarding necessarily, but we can go paddle boarding because it's actually quite calm the waves and we can just enjoy being on the beach in the thank you weather. thank you um have you told other people about this place no because i don't want it to get crowded <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that was so great you guys so much great vocabulary in aubrey's answer before i highlight a couple things i want to remind you guys that this is on youtube as well so you can watch us give these sample answers and i think that is a nice way to mimic or shadow to improve your english and especially your pronunciation so go over to isles energy tv guys this is episode 1091 if you want to check that out um, okay. First of all, awesome way to introduce that. I can't help but talk about, um, so like it's, it's a very general term. Like it's not a super specific meaning, which means you guys can use this to introduce like almost anything you are going to talk about in part two. You'd be like, I can't help but talk about such and such because honestly, it's the only thing I could think of, or I can't help but talk about such and such because it is my most favorite thing ever. I mean, like it really could introduce like any topic. Sure. So that's yeah, an awesome basically phrase. means the same as like, I'm excited to talk about this. Yeah. It is very native. We say that all the time. Like I can't help but do this because I'm yeah. so excited about it. I love like the double negative phrases, um, that come up, totally. you know what I mean? Like it sounds, it's not a double negative. I mean, it sounds negative. Like I cannot help, but it's actually a positive phrase. Anyway, it actually means I really want to. 
Yeah. Right. I know. Yeah. Um, okay. Also, adjective, brief drive. So instead of saying something is close, say it is a brief drive, um, describing different kinds of beaches, a rocky beach, a white sand beach. Instead of saying clean blue water, boring, band six, Aubrey, band nine, said pristine aqua water. So guys, do you see how like just having a few different adjectives to replace normal ones raises the level of your answer so greatly, right? Um, Mm -hmm. Hue instead of color, which I know we've taught you guys before. So you should know that synonym talking about tide pools. Tide pools are the best family thing in the world, right? You go and you see all these. So a tide pool guys, when the, when it's the tide is out, when it's low tide, the ocean is out. It leaves puddles in rocks on the beach and you see sea creatures in there like sea urchins and starfish up here on the Oregon coast. We see lots of starfish and sea sea urchins. It's really cool. Um, chunks of coral, sand dollars. So all these very, very specific vocabulary terms related to the beach and the sea. So I love it very much guys. If you think you might talk about or describe a beach or sea moment, definitely write down some of those vocab words from Aubrey's answer. Um, awesome. So check this out on IELTS energy TV guys, leave a comment with how you would answer one of today's questions. We would love to see your ideas guys. And remember, take some free English quizzes challenge challenge yourself. Go to allearsenglish.com slash quiz. Everything is free guys. Just choose a goal, take a quiz, get some material. Why not? Um, we made it for you. Allearsenglish.com slash quiz. Awesome. Aubrey, thank you so much. That was fun. That was really fun. Yeah. I always love talking about the beat. You could tell I could have just talked forever. (laughs) <laughs> Stop me at two minutes. <laughs> yup, that's the examiner's job. Exactly. All right. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.